Say the Lord bless you from Zion. She the flock bears you to from all the days of your life. Always, now, and ever, and forever.
and for the faithful living in them. Let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For those who travel by sea or in land, for the sick, the suffering, the captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. be delivered from all affliction, wrath, and need. Let us pray to the Lord. Protect us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. and glorious lady, the Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary with all the saints. Let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, Lord. God, mighty beyond description, glorious above all understanding, merciful without limits, loving us all beyond expression, look of compassion on us and on this holy church, O Master, and show us, and those who pray with us, the riches of your tender mercy. For to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is due all glory, honor, and worship, now and ever and forever.
sign us with the light of your face, that walking in it we may see the light of your unapproachable glory. Direct our steps in the observance of your commandments. Through the prayers of your most pure mother, O Christ our God, save us. God grant you many years. God grant you many years. God grant you many blessed years. O Son of God, wondrous in your saints,
dear brother bishops, particularly as Bishop Skurla, Bishop Black, Bishop Brunet, and fellow clergy, dear religious and members of the lay faithful, dear friends, it is my honor and privilege to convey to you as the Holy Father's representative to the United States, the spiritual closeness and paternal affection of Pope Francis. Bishop Burnett, may God bless and reward you for your service as Apostolic Administrator of Parma. Bishop Elect Pipta, here he is. <laughs> As one who appreciates music and liturgy, perhaps the words of the Psalm 150 are appropriate for this occasion. Oh, praise God with sound of trumpet. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings and pipes. Indeed, we praise God together with his people of the eparchy of Parma, since today he blesses this church with a new shepherd to lead it in the name of Christ. God has prepared you well for this new ministry, calling you to serve as the liturgy, at the liturgy even from a young age. I don't say when it started. <laughs> and eventually leading you to the priesthood. Your ministry as a priest has formed you in loving service for the people of God, especially in parochial ministry and in your work in the leadership and formation of men for the priesthood. As you begin to follow this new calling as a bishop, it is good to hear the words of Pope Francis in a homily he gave last Friday at a mass for Pope Benedict XVI and the cardinals and bishops who died in the last year. Recalling the very first words with which Pope Benedict described himself following his election, a humble laborer in the vineyard of the Lord, Pope Francis said, I quote, Indeed, Christians, especially the Pope, the cardinals, and the bishops are called to be humble laborers, to serve, not to be served, and to put the fruits of the Lord's vineyard before their advantage. What a fine thing is to renounce ourselves for the Church of Jesus. Bishop Elepipta, may your humble labor for God's people produce, both for you and for them, the comforting joy that comes from the gospel, allowing you to sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. I will now read the papal decree of your appointment, and the bishop will show it to you. It is written in Latin, so I will, the priest, they will understand Latin. And uh, it is signed by Pope Francis, of course. Francis, bishop servant of the servants of God. To our beloved son, Robert Mark Pipta, from the clergy of the Holy Protection of Mary, Eparchy of Phoenix, until now rector of the Seminary of Saint Cyril and Methodius in Pittsburgh, appointed bishop of the Eparchy of Parma of the Rutinian, greetings and apostolic blessing. The mother of Jesus shines forth as a sign of sure hope and solace for the pilgrim people of God, and standing near the cross on which hung her son, she has taught the faithful to hope against hope. Consequently, enlightened by the wondrous example of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we, who have the care of nourishing the flock of the Lord, continually proclaim the joy of the gospel. Indeed. It is the responsibility of the Roman pontiff to appoint to communities which are without its ordinary appropriate moderators. Accordingly, since the eparchy of Parma of the Rutinian stands in need of its own shepherd, we turn our attention to you, beloved son, 
who, having already acquired genuine and solid experience, are, in our judgment, suitable for governing that community. Therefore, upon consultation with the prefect of the dicastery for the Eastern Churches, by our apostolic authority, we appoint you Eparchial Bishop of Parma of the Routinians, granting to you the rights and at the same time the obligations which are connected to this office according to the canon law. You may receive Episcopal ordination from any Catholic bishop anywhere outside the city of Rome, the liturgical prescript being observed. However, prior to this, as established by ecclesiastical law, you must duly make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity toward us and our successors in this sea, in compliance with the norms of the Code of the Canons of the Eastern Churches. To be sure, you will inform the clergy and Christ faithful. We are actually doing that now. <laughs> and Christ faithful and trusted to your pastoral care about this our decree. And we exhort all of them under your leadership to observe even more diligently the divine precepts in daily life, clearly manifesting the living presence of Christ in the world. Finally, beloved son, we encourage you, trusting completely in God, together with the prayerful intercession of the most compassionate mother of God and that of Saint Cyril and Methodius, to guide the hearts of all the faithful along the path of salvation and peace. Given at Rome, at Saint John Lateran, on the 31st day of the month of August, in the year of the Lord 2023, the 11th of our pontificate, and it is signed Pope Francis. Because the Holy Father Francis, the Pope of Rome, has decreed me to carry out this ministry, I give thanks and accept, and say nothing to the contrary. Oh, holy martyrs, you have struggled courageously, and have received Oh, 
commerce, chosen to be bishop of the God State City of Parma. Peace, health, and happiness for many years. Oh, entrusted to you, and may you be a staff and a support to those who are obedient, but lead the disobedient and the wayward to correction and gentleness and to obedience, and they shall continue in due submission. By the appointment and approval of the Holy See of Rome, divine grace which always heals what is infirmed and fulfills what is lacking, ordains the love of God, the priest Robert, chosen to be the bishop of the God-saved city of Parma. Therefore, let us all pray to him. That the grace that the grace of the All-Holy Spirit may come upon him, and let us all say, Lord, have mercy. Son and of the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Master, Lord our God, through your illustrious Apostle Paul, you have established the order and ranks and degrees for the service of the divine celebration for your precious and most pure mysteries upon your holy altar. First, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers. You, O Master of all, the descent of power in the grace of your Holy Spirit, strengthen this man whom you have chosen and made worthy of the yoke of the gospel and the episcopal dignity through the imposition of hands of us bishops here present. You strength, as you strengthen your holy apostles and prophets and anointed kings, as you sanctified hierarchs, Make this episcopacy blameless. Adorn him with all honor. Show him to be holy so that he may be worthy to ask that which is for the salvation of the people and, and you hear him. For holy is your name and glorified is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just cover that one. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for peace from on high and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our Holy Father Francis, Pope of Rome, for his priesthood and for his protection and perseverance, peace, health, and salvation, and for the works of his hands. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the servant of God, Robert, now ordained bishop, and for his salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that our loving God may grant him a pure and blameless episcopacy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we be delivered from all affliction, wrath, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Protect 
you save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. God, because human nature is incapable of enduring your divine essence, you in your plan of salvation appointed teachers for us of like nature as ourselves to stand before your altar to offer sacrifice and oblation for all your people. You, O oh Master, make this man who has been shown to be a steward of the Episcopal grace an imitator of you, a true shepherd who lay down your life for your sheep, a guide to the blind, a light to those in darkness, an instructor to the ignorant, a teacher to the young, a lamp to the world, so that having perfected the souls entrusted to him in this present life, he may stand on a shame before the throne and receive the great reward which you have prepared for those who struggle for the preaching of your gospel. For yours is your, our mercy and salvation, O oh, our God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever.
Thomas is it thrown in the chair? No, he's now never and forever being there. Let us be attentive. Peace to all. Wisdom be attentive. You make your angels illustrious apostle evangelist Luke grant that you proclaim the word with great power for the fulfillment of the gospel of his beloved son our Lord Jesus Christ Amen
disciples returned in jubilation saying master even the demons are subject to us in your name Jesus said in reply I watch Satan fall from the sky like lightning see what I have done I have given you power to tread on snakes and scorpions and all the forces of the enemy and nothing shall ever injure you nevertheless do not rejoice so much in the fact that the devils are subject to you as that, as that your names are inscribed in heaven. At that moment, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I offer you praise, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because what you have hidden from the learned and the clever, you have revealed to the merest children. Yes, Father, you have graciously Willed it so. Praise be our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. I saw Satan fall like lightning from the sky. I did, actually. I'm, Jesus was saying this to his uh, disciples, to his, actually to the 72 apostles that he sent out. But at that moment when Bishop Robert was kneeling before the holy table, and his ordaining bishops had their hands on them and the Holy Gospel was over them. I too saw Satan fall like lightning from the sky. There was something about that moment, not only that I anticipated, but also you almost feel it. That somehow there was a step taken, a dagger thrown into the heart of evil at that moment with the ordination of a new bishop and especially Bishop Robert. And so as I was preparing for the homily today, um, and I'm just sorry that there's no clock in the back, so you're on your own. Uh, you'll be sorry, too. But I thought, you know, what, what is it that I can say? Uh, the readings aren't exactly what you would expect for the ordination of a bishop, right? They're the readings for today for the feast of the holy archangels, Michael and Gabriel, of all the heavenly powers. So we hear something about angels several times in the reading in the Apostle and also in, in the Gospel. We also heard about one other angel, which was Satan, who fell like lightning from the sky. An extra one. Okay. Is it better? Oh, rats, I hate holding these things. Okay. No, 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 that's okay. That's even worse. <laughs> <clears throat> so forgive me for being so informal, but it's just my nature. Um, you see, I've been a bishop for 27 years. And as we say in the Romanian rite, you know, when you say God grant you many years, we say too many years, unto many years. <laughs> and it's true, it's true, it's true. So let me at least get started. Your Eminence, Colonel Pierre. 
Your Eminence, Metropolitan William, my brother bishops, especially. Oh, there you are. No, I was. <laughs> that was purely symbolic, you know. I, <laughs> Bishop Robert and all my brother bishops, brothers and sisters, fathers, sisters, and just everybody. If I seem nervous, and believe me, I am. It's because I'm from a, a itty bitty diocese, a itty bitty epoch. We have 17 tiny parishes and missions scattered from Montreal to Los Angeles, the Sherman Oaks, and two monasteries, one in Olympia, Washington, and one in St. Nazian's, Wisconsin. It's a tiny, tiny diocese. One of the things that you get to do when you're a bishop, and you will find out, is you get to go to Rome at, uh, every five years, more or less, and as part of that, what's called ad limina, to visit ad limina apostolorum, to the threshold of the apostles, depending on who's the pope and what his procedure is, you might have some time with him. And my first ad limina visit was with Pope St. John Paul. That's how far back I go. And I was very conscious as I walked, he gave us a little five minute one on one. And as I walked into the library there, where he was, he was standing there looking at a map of the United States. We didn't have Canada at that time. And he said, you have a big diocese. And I said, yes. But your Holy Ghost, I, we're probably the smallest diocese in the Catholic Church, so we really need your prayers. And he said, little diocese, but big bishop. <laughs> and I realized that you know you've made it in life when you've been insulted by the Pope. And now I can say I've been insulted by a saint, right? I've been insulted by a saint. So that's pretty cool. But there are other perks that, Bishop Robert, you will get to understand. But besides the fun parts, if you will, there are huge duties involved. And that's, I guess, what I wanted to say a little bit about. There are three in particular. And on that occasion, I did get a cross from Pope St. John Paul that had images of these three particular duties, or munera, that are the duties of a bishop. And the, first, the duties are to teach, to sanctify, and to govern. Right? To teach, to sanctify, to govern. Well, you know, I thought about that, and it's, it's true that these are the munera. But after a few years of being a bishop, you think, you know, how am I supposed to teach? I'm more ignorant now than I was when I became a bishop. That's progress, I guess. How am I supposed to sanctify? I can celebrate the services. But my own sanctity is not up to the task. I'm a sinner. I'm sinful. And I'm supposed to govern, but how often does my own life feel like it's out of control? And I say this not you know, to be particularly um, confessional here. I think this is part of all of our experience. Right? We realize that we're not who we thought we were at one time, when we get older especially. And so we have to take account of that. And so I would like to offer just a, a little bit of advice, maybe, to Bishop Robert. It comes from, I, you know, friends used to tell me I had a heart condition. By that they meant that I thought they thought I was a very loving person. And I thought, well, it's okay. You don't know any better, you can say that. But then I did have a heart condition. About a year and a half ago, I had a, a, an aortic aneurysm. And so as part of the treatment for that, thank God, one of the gifts for you, Bishop Robert, is that you're here in Cleveland, where the Cleveland Clinic is. I was on the table getting a heart catheterization, and I'm sure the doctor was a Muslim. Because he said, wow, when he saw the aneurysm. We usually don't see you here. We usually see you when we're cutting you open to see what happened. God must really want you to be around for a while. And by the way, how do you get to be a bishop anyway? What do you have to do to be a bishop? And I realized he really didn't get it. He really didn't get it. You don't have to do anything to be a bishop. You have to be what God has lo is looking for. And if God is looking for somebody to teach, to sanctify, to govern, how is it specifically that you suppose God wants you to teach?
Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit. And he said, I, Father, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned, and you have revealed them to the childlike, yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. This is what made Jesus happy in today's gospel, was that something was communicated to the childlike that was hidden from the learned and those who thought they were learned, from the wise and those who think they are wise, from those who teach but never learn. And so there's a certain kind of intellectual humility that goes with teaching when you're a bishop. And even more, sanctify. You know, in the Eastern Catholic churches, we have come a long way since the Second Vatican Council, especially in places like the United States. Second Vatican Council where Patriarch Maximus IV Sayyid, the Mel Mel Melchite Patriarch, got up and gave the first intervention not in the Latin language. He spoke in French, and he said that the Roman Catholic Church ought to consider restoring the diaconate, communion in both kinds, and liturgy in the vernacular. Right there was one of our big contributions to the life of the church. And from there, we embarked as Eastern Catholics on our own program of renewal, of delatinization. And I think we've done a good job with that so far, but maybe we've gone as far as we can with that being our mission in life. Maybe as an Eastern Catholic church, there is another that has to do with sanctifying people. Sanctifying people. <clears throat> In traditional Byzantine, or may I say Orthodox anthropology, the human person has three parts or pieces. There's the physical part, there's the psychic part, the soul, and there's the spiritual part, the pneuma or the, the noose, which is not an intellectual uh, it's not intellectual. It not has nothing to, does not have to do with reasoning. It has to do with a spiritual vision, a spiritual intuition. And that has to do with entering into the place where the angels dwell. The universe has two parts to it, the visible and the invisible. And the invisible is where the angels live and also the other spirits. The visible is where we live. But because uh, uniquely in all of creation, human beings have not only a body and not only a rational mind, but also a soul, if you will, because psyche means soul, but also this intellectual, this, this spiritual intellect, that's the place where we encounter God. That's the place where we stand, standing on both sides, the visible and the invisible realm. We have a space that's built into us the way God created us for encountering God on the invisible side of things. Now, we know about an invisible, you know, the, 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 the culture accepts that idea that there's an invisible side to everything because you might be smiling at me and waving your hand, but inside you might be thinking, when is he going to be done? <laughs> and so, okay, that's... that's but there's more to visible and invisible, and science knows that. What about dark matter? What's, what, what's with that? Huh? Something that we're discovering now, there's a whole realm in the universe probably bigger than what we've encountered that is completely invisible and undetectable, except by mathematics and some experiments. But when it comes to angels and spirits, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, we don't really believe that stuff anymore. It's so mythological. But the scripture believes it. Jesus talks about angels and spirits and Satan like real phenomena, like real things, like real beings. But we've lost touch of that somehow in our Western world. Metropolitan Kalis does where, says, but the threefold scheme of body, soul, and spirit is more precise and more illuminating, particularly in our own age when the soul and the spirit are often confused and when most people are not even aware that they possess a spiritual intellect. The culture and education system of the contemporary West are based almost exclusively on the reasoning brain and to a lesser degree of the aesthetic emotions. Most of us have forgotten that we are not only brain and will, senses and feelings, we are also spirit. 
Modern man has, for the most part, lost touch with the truest and highest aspect of himself. And the result of this inward alienation can be seen all too plainly in his restlessness, his lack of identity, and loss of hope. Does that sound like the world we live in? The culture that we live in? We, Eastern Catholics, have a tradition of speaking about angels as if they were our neighbors. And I think we need to do that. We also need to reintroduce people to themselves to that spiritual part of themselves that they don't remember exists. We have to remind our brothers and sisters who we are, they, who they are, and what they are. Then there's the third. So that's, that's sanctifying, by the way. That's what I mean by sanctifying. Bringing people into the realm of the spirit so that by this contact with the holy and the part of them that was built to encounter and to and, and, and then to li live in the realm of the holy, they can become holy themselves. Then to govern. That's what we like a lot as bishops for the most part. We tend to take what Jesus said to his apostles, the 72 apostles, and apply it to ourselves. Those who hear you, hear me. Or rather, hear me, hear you. No, no, what, you, Jesus is talking to his disciples. You can hear me, I'm a bishop, but that doesn't mean that you're hearing Jesus. That's for you in your spiritual life to discern and to decide in a certain sense. And therefore, we're entering into a whole new dynamic, not new, an old dynamic within the church, but new for us perhaps, where we expect the Spirit to join with us in everything that has to do with the governance of the church as well. As Eastern Catholics, we know something about being a synodal church. And we can help, we can help the whole Catholic Church to discover this ancient element of its life. The element where the Holy Spirit moves freely and by the interaction of the members of the church is able to put the church on the path that the Holy Spirit wants. That's on the invisible side of things. Governance. We used to talk about the power to sanctify, the power to teach, and the power to govern. But let me suggest, Bishop Robert, that the word power is not helpful. Perhaps the word is not power, but capacity. By the work of the Holy Spirit and the will of the Church and the Father, you have been given a special capacity to govern, but also to teach and to sanctify. However, this is a gift. It's not a talent. It's not something that you can take pride in, that any one of us can take pride in. So I would suggest to you that you take to heart these, these three duties of a bishop and look at them from perhaps a new angle, recognizing that we have a new mission in a new church, a mission that is ancient in a church that is also ancient. So we entrust this Church of Parma to you for your leadership and pray for the capacity that you, for your capacity to lead it, to teach it, and to make it holy in your kingdom, in God's kingdom, sorry. I do sound like a bishop, don't I? <laughs> and I thought I would conclude repeating a prayer that we just heard. Different translation, but the same prayer. I have a secretary who wants to know what, what his job description is. He's a deacon, and I'm not real good at job descriptions. So I've never, I struggled with my job description too. So I just outlined what I've been thinking about for my job description. But the liturgy itself gives the job description of a bishop. And I'm going to repeat that for you so that you can join in word for word and add your prayer to this prayer. Make this man also, who has been proclaimed a steward of the Episcopal grace, to be an imitator of you, the true shepherd, who laid down his life for his sheep, for your sheep, his sheep, who laid down your li his life for you, 
who laid down his life for his sheep. To be a leader of the blind, a light to those in darkness, a reprover of the unwise, a teacher of the young, a lamp to the world, that having perfected the souls entrusted to him in this present life, he may stand unashamed before your throne and receive the great reward which you have prepared for those who have contested valiantly for the preaching of your gospel. The apostles named deacons so that they could engage in the ministry of the word. It's not the ministry of the words. We've got plenty of politicians and pundits who, will, who fill the world with their chatter. It's the word, the word of God, the gospel. May that gospel always be on your heart, Bishop Robert, and on your mind. May it be a light to you, and may you be a light to the church. God grant you many years. with our whole soul, with our whole mind, let us say, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, almighty God of our fathers, we pray you hear and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray you hear and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. pray for our Holy Father, Francis, Pope of Rome, for our Most Reverend, Archbishop Christoph, for our Metropolitan William, for our God-loving Bishop Robert, for our God-loving Bishop, Bishop Kurt and Neil, for those who serve and have served this Holy Church, for our spiritual fathers, and for all our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, government and all the service of our country. Again, we pray for the people here present who wait your great and abundant mercy, for those who show us mercy, and for all Christians of the true faith. Lord, have mercy. For you are a merciful and loving God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever.
his kingdom, all you Christians of the true faith, always, now, and ever, and forever. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom our holy father Francis, the Pope of Rome. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom our most reverend Metropolitan William, his eminence, the Archbishop Christoph, the God-loving bishops Kurt and Neil, the entire priestly, diaconal, and monastic order, our government, and all in the service of our country, and the ever-memorable founders and benefactors of this holy church. May the Lord God remember all you Christians of the true faith, Always, now and ever and forever. and can celebrants. May the Holy Spirit come upon you and the power of the Most High overshadow you. May the Spirit himself can celebrate with us all the days of our lives. May the Lord direct your steps. May the Lord remember in his kingdom always, now and ever and forever. His place before us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord God Almighty, who alone are holy and receive the sacrifice of praise from those who call upon you with their whole heart, accept also the prayer of us sinners and bring us to your holy altar and enable us to offer you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and the people's failings. Make us worthy to find favor in your sight that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you and that the good spirit of your grace may rest on us and on these gifts here present and on all your people. Grant this through the mercies of your only begotten Son with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy good and life-creating spirit, now and ever and forever. so that with one mind we may profess.
blessed powers, O loving and kind Master and Savior. Holy are you, and all holy you, and your only begotten Son, and your only Spirit. Holy are you, and all holy and magnificent is your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him should not perish, but have life everlasting. He came and fulfilled the whole divine plan on our behalf. On the night he was betrayed, or rather when he surrendered himself for the life of the world, he took bread into his all-pure, immaculate hands, gave thanks and blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you, for the remission of sin. He took the chalice after supper, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Amen. Remembering, therefore, this saving command and all that has come to pass in our behalf, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the sitting at the right hand, and the second coming in glory, offering you your own from your own moments and everywhere. We judgment or condemnation. Moreover, we offer to you the spiritual sacrifice for those departed in the faith, the forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, and sinners, and for every just spirit brought to perfection in faith, especially for our most holy, most pure, most blessed, and glorious lady, the Theotokos, and their it is truly proper to glorify you. Remember, O Lord, those who bring offerings, 
and perform good deeds in your holy churches and those who remember the poor and upon all of us send down your mercies and grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honored and magnificent name Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the precious gifts offered and consecrated, that our God, who loves us all, may receive them on his holy, heavenly, and mystical altar as an aroma of spiritual fragrance, and send down upon us in return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. From all affliction, wrath, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Protect us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord have mercy. That this whole day be perfect, holy, peaceful, and without sin, let us beseech the Lord. Guardian of our souls and bodies, let us beseech the Lord. For the pardon and remission of our sins and offenses, let us beseech the Lord. For what is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us beseech the Lord. That we may spend the rest of our life in peace and repentance, let us beseech the Lord. For a Christian, painless, unashamed, peaceful end of our life, and for a good account before the fearsome judgment seat of Christ, let us beseech the Lord. As for unity in the faith and for communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. who loves us all, we commit our whole life and hope. We implore, pray, and entreat you to make us worthy to partake with a clear conscience of your heavenly and awesome mysteries from this sacred and spiritual table. May they bring about the remission of sins, the pardon of transgressions, the communion of the Holy Spirit, the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, confidence in you, and not for judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, O Master, that we may with confidence without condemnation here call you Father, the God of heaven, and save. Son and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. give you 
you thine so invisible king, for by your immeasurable power <clears throat> you have fashioned all things, and in the greatness of your mercy have brought all things out of non-existence into being. Look down from heaven, O Master, upon those who bow their heads to you, <clears throat> for they do not bow to flesh and blood, but to you, the awesome God. Therefore, O Master, make smooth for the good of all the path that lies ahead according to the need of each. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel, cure those who are sick, O physician of souls and bodies. Through the grace, the mercies, and the loving kindness of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy good and life creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Let us be attentive. Holy gifts to holy people. all know how to do really good church here. It's wonderful. There will be a, a communion, a Holy Communion announcement for those that are of the Catholic faith, of the Orthodox Christians, and are properly prepared. We will have two chalices here in the front and two about halfway down and one up in the choir loft. The faithful will come forward. You will be just, you will Distribute communion on a single spoon in both species. Open your mouth wide, put your head back, do not stick out your tongue, do not say amen, and do not clamp down on the spoon. Now for the clergy, the ones that are celebrating will receive now as they are, and after they're done, you will come up through the northern door, receive the precious body from the Metropolitan, and consume it immediately, and then get the precious blood out this door and back to the pew. There just isn't enough room for all of you to be up there. Thank you. O Lord, I believe and profess that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the Living God, who came into the world to save sinners, and I am the first.
also to be a sinner.
together, let us praise his name. Approach with fear of God and with faith. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is God and has revealed himself to us. Don't lie in supper, want and go hungry. But those who seek the Lord shall lack no blessing.
keep your tongue from evil and let your lips from speaking deceit.
and bless your inheritance. For many years, most reverend Archbishop, we have seen the true light. We have received the heavenly spirit. We have found the true faith, and we worship the Blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, and forever. receive the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly, life-creating, and awesome mysteries of Christ. Let us worthily thank the Lord. Lord we thank you, O Master, benefactor of our souls, who loves us all, that this day you have made us worthy of your heavenly and immortal mysteries, through the prayers and the intercessions of the glorious Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary and of all your saints. Make straight our path, confirm us all in fear of you, guard us, our lives, and safeguard our steps. For you are our sanctification. We give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. giver of every good and perfect gift. In days of old, you sent your Holy Spirit upon the prophet Moses and the seventy elders, and through your prophet Joel promised, I will pour out my Spirit upon all people. In these hard days, you send us your word, the brightness of your glory and the imprint of your being. In the river Jordan, your Holy Spirit repose on him. And he promises another advocate, the spirit of truth. Through your spirit you have filled us with light and life and have bestowed on mortal men a share in the high priesthood of your only begotten Son, that they might serve at your holy altar and give us communion the holy body and precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, O Lord, fill your servant Robert, whom you have raised to the hierarchy with the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make him an imitator of the Good Shepherd. Perfect him with your grace, that he may lead your people to perfection. Grant him a long life in joy and in health, in service to your people, and in the contemplation of your holy mysteries. For you alone are holy, and we glorify your holy name, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, always, now, and ever, and forever. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Most Reverend Archbishop, bless the throne. 
Blessed is the throne of the glory of your kingdom and throned upon the cherubim, always, now, and ever, and forever. Blessed are you on the throne of his kingdom, enthroned upon the cherubim, always, now, and ever. The Lord, God-loving Bishop Robert, is enthroned as the Bishop of Parma, Axio.
pastoral staff on which to watch over Christ's flock, which has been entrusted to your care. Oxio. and loving kindness now and ever and forever. Amen. Glory be to Christ our God, our hope. Glory be to you. our true God, have mercy on us and save us through the prayers of his most pure mother, through the protection of the honorable and heavenly angelic powers whose synaxis we gloriously celebrate today, through the prayers of your, our holy father, John Chrysostom, the Archbishop of Constantinople, through the prayers of all the saints, for Christ is good and loves us all.
Father Francis, the Pope of Rome, grant, O Lord, many years. Loving Bishop Robert, grant, O Lord, many years. Oh, to our God, loving bishops Kurt and Nil, and grant, O Lord, many years. Oh, government and all in the service of our country, grant, O Lord, many years. years. To our priestly and monastic orders, to all brothers and sisters, to uh, the his, his Eminence Christophe, and to all the other bishops, clergy, and religious here present, grant, O Lord, many happy and blessed years. No haya lita.